Hello. Hi and welcome folks. My name is RPJ and this is your show live by way of Jonathan Still. How are you? How you doing? What's up? What's up? You me. Rumor has it, I am swell. Thank you for asking. Truth of the matter is I am not swell. Um uh, I'm really uh, fucked, for lack of a better phrase. I'm annoyed that this computer, again, doesn't work. The one I'm using here, the one over here, my personal older computer. I fixed, it was working for a little bit, now it's no longer fixed. It sucks. Keep shutting off on me again. Knowing that I take it to the dude, and uh, hopefully he doesn't charge me. He actually fixes it where it just works, because I don't really want to get rid of it. I like the computer. Anyway, uh, another thing that annoys me is the playback of these shows. It sounds ridiculously terrible. Ridiculously. I hate the way it sounds. And actually, Friday was my best show from my own perspective. I have some feelings of it. I thought my Friday show was the best show I have done to date. I thought it sounded great. I thought I had always on point, bang, bang, bang. I thought I had multiple topics. I thought I can see and read the chat room and then still keep my thoughts going. I didn't respond to the chat room. I just thought I, was, I did my best show today. I played it back a little bit. It sounds good in spots, but overall, it sounds like shit on a stick. I hate it. I hate the way it sounds. I mean, I, I can't help that I'm ugly. I, I, that's nothing I can do about my looks. But what I can do is sound and have it. Well, it's not me. I don't know why it keeps going real really crazy and shit. I, I just have no idea. I go further with this show. I uh, will go to the chat room and see if that's open and available. So give me a few minutes. No, I'm not actually leaving. I'm just uh, going to the chat room part of this. Blah, 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 blah. Because right now all I see is me. So I'm going to the chat room and there's only well, me, me talking. Know. See a chat room with no one here. It's amazing that no one's here. Hello. Okay, I'm here. No one else is here. Okay. Anyway, doesn't matter if you guys don't show up, I guess. Doesn't matter. All right, let's put the camera back on. Okay, doesn't matter if no one's here, doesn't matter if I'm talking to myself, doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I would like if you guys hear me out and write to me and, you know, respond, have a thought of yourselves, say something fun. But mostly I do this for myself. Like most geniuses, <laughs> I, like most performers, um, I'm trying to do myself. I'm trying to do the best for myself, for my, for my feelings, my perspective. I would like to hear and see for myself. Now, again, that was also my voice, decent, and blah, 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 blah. All right, so now. Hello, Melody. Thank you for showing up to the show and you being my only watcher. Thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it sounds like. I am so. Uh, I apologize to the audience that my shows have been just terrible. I don't know what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you for showing me some love. I really do appreciate that. I really appreciate that you uh, have some time in your busy day and night. 
to uh, hang out with your favorite God King RPG. I don't know why I say that at least in that, but thank you for showing up. I really do appreciate the uh, support and friendship. Awesome. Um, let me go into the show now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I feel like I, uh, I'm doing that, that uh, from a looks perspective. Uh, I don't think I am looking good. But uh, thank you for saying that anyway. I thank you for your lies. Lies, 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 and all lies. I thank you for your lies. I can use a big lie every once in a while. Make me feel good at, about myself. Today, I name nothing. And the reason for that title is uh, instead of talking about the things that, uh, like Prince, I wanted to talk about Prince and all those things. But the reason why I'm uh, naming the show nothing is because that's how I feel. I feel like nothing. I haven't slept really in the last two nights. I am depleted of extra energy. But I'm from the bed to myself. That's right. That's my lady. She uh, got into the bed. So she's, she's enjoying the, having the bed to herself, taking her ass off. I myself have to get up in, um, in, and I'm watching old um, westerns. Um, watch some things with westerns. But, and then before that, I watched the 1957 movie version of that's a play that I did in school, and uh, I can't remember what character I was. I don't know if I was the Henry uh, Fonda character. I can't remember, but uh, I had parts in that, in, that, in that play, and I was in that play, and um, I did 12 angles. Uh, so, but, and I watched the game when I couldn't sleep. Last night, I watched um, Clint Eastwood's Pistol uh, of Dallas. And, and then, you know, I finally fell asleep. But then it was time to because, uh, you know, as soon as I was online, my girl walks in with my uh, phone and uh, says, hey, you know, it's time to get up. My alarm went off. Wake me up. You set the alarm to wake up. So I'm waking you up, so. And I thanked her for it by punching her in the face. I had to do that. I had to get up anyway, and I had to make my friends. You guys need to know where everything I'm doing in life. But yeah, I had stuff. So that's why the show's named Nothing. I have nothing on my mind other than Roger's shit. But before I go into Roger's shit, um, um, those who are watching now and those later, um, I'm probably going to lose about uh, two thirds of the audience. Uh, I've got so much in my head about where I want to go with this show, with my videos, things that the opportunities that are, are being presented for me, which I'm so thankful for having a, a second chance at really taking advantage of the uh, opportunity that is given to me. There's nothing I did to earn the other than maintain friendships with people, but again, I, I, I'm so lucky to be uh, given a second chance to do something in this medium. Uh, I'm really thankful about, to, uh, about that. I'm just uh, over the moon about that. Uh, I will show you more enthusiasm again, but I am depleted of extra energies because I haven't slept in two nights, basically. I slept like three hours, one last uh, two I slept three hours the other night, and I think I slept maybe 20, 30 minutes to this, this morning. So it's not been really good for me in terms of sleeping. Um, but uh, as I was saying, I'm probably going to lose two thirds of this audience that follows me the, of the middle of the battles. But the, my core people, my core friends and fans um, who get me, some people I've already about what I want to do in terms of a show, blog talk show, and things of that nature, is that I want to do things that are not being done, like reading books, 
talking about um, other things, politics and sports, uh, talk about uh, deep personal situations and issues, talking about the abuse, talking about overcoming these things. As like my videos, I like to do more things about reinvention and evolving from whatever situation or whatever bad things that happen to a person in life. I like to get more into that. So some of the ratchet, the uh, some of the ratchet shit that I talked about, and if you think that me talking about Jamila, this one uh, specific uh, topic, is something that is me dwelling in the ratchetness, it's really not because that person is so ratchet that yeah, to uh, you know not have to, but I, I go a little uh, uh, layer deeper into some of that ratchet behaviors. But yeah, I uh, I, um, I I know that I'm gonna lose two thirds of the audience because I'm with myself as a human being, and where I like to do is different than most Google Cast and blog talk, blog talk and uh, videos. It won't be some nonsense, narcissistic bullshit that uh, I will be doing or doing anymore. If I do that in the first place, I'm not even sure. But, uh, I, I like to go different places. I like to talk about, like, I have a list of topics I have right now, like uh, Australian gun laws and murderers and uh, other things that I really, uh, I would like when I get my equipment, uh, and hopefully by the end of this week, my camera, I'm going to be playing with it, and uh, I'm going to do some outside shooting with it, and I, I, me talking to another producer, I guess. We were talking about some of the uh, things that uh, I could do, like uh, and shoot with that camera, with a legit camera and equipment. I can get out there and shoot and have Australians, talk to more Australians. And uh, uh, there's so many great ideas I kind of I, I want to do and, and, and want to grow from. Uh, I think this is just going to be an amazing time for me. And, I know that I'm going to lose a lot of you guys, and that's unfortunate. I wish and hope that a lot of you guys evolve with me as I grow and evolve. And uh, as I, you know, take this medium and, and what's other than talk about how great I am or how strong or how tough I am, or not enough bullshit that you can get from anywhere else uh, from. Uh, this meeting. Right? What? what? I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, you said nothing. Uh, so, with that, with that in line, um, let's go into another topic called uh, RPJ. And it's basically me talking about myself, <laughs> which is something I just been saying that I don't want to talk about. But uh, this isn't the uh, glamorized version of who I am and the things that I have done or want to do or will do. This is just the truth of who I really am and what I've done and things of that stuff. Um, I, if you see me, I think that I am a decent dude. Uh, one second. So I think my puppy, either my dog's at the door, or oh, someone's at the door. All right. Um, I think I'm a good dude. I think that I'm a, a good dude. Um, I try my best. Damn. I try my best uh, sometimes. Sometimes I'm up in other, other situations. But I think that I'm overall I'm a good dude. I have a good heart. Uh, I'm not really super emotional, although I like to think that I'm emotional, and um, there's a bit of uh, perplexity with me. I am very extroverted in personality and thoughts, and putting my career in this medium and putting myself out in front street. But my initial my initial response is to be as tight as a drum, as quiet and um, low key, and uh, have my business to myself and my relationships with people to quiet out of the public eye. 
So there's a bit of dilemma that I am, uh, duality that I have to fight all the time. Because I am extroverted, because I don't care really what the audience thinks of me. I mean, I like the audience to think I'm a good person, but there's going to be always that people that But because I don't have a great feeling that for people to, to love me, I mean, as much as I, I think that I want that, I don't ultimately don't care. And um, so I fight against the fact that I know the, I have to, what? <laughs> That's my train of thought. But I have to fight against the duality of being quiet and secretive, I shouldn't say secretive, but the low key and personal, keep everything in house. And then uh, my extroverted self. Uh, so it's a constant battle I, I have with that. But the noise that I'm getting again, I'm going to get a little more uh, oomph. A little more patient in myself, a little more patient in the process, and take the notes. Take some of the notes that I can apply to myself, and I actually I'm writing everything down from everybody's perspective. And I'm trying to see what works best, and I can use those notes to evolve as a personality. If you will. So. Um, that's how I see myself today. I see myself as a uh, decent father, a decent mate, a decent boyfriend, husband. Um, I don't think that I'm spectacular other than a few little skills that I have that I think that are uh, you know, better than most. Uh, um, I think I'm a good man, and I think that I am. Uh, I do have a little bit of an ego, and I do think that I'm better than most, a lot of people. I think that I not only talk it, I've done it, and, and, uh, and I've walked it. What? I walked it and talked it, and I've done things, talked and it. I've done things, I'm happy about those things. I haven't made that effort. I haven't made that effort uh, in a while now. I haven't been that person in a while now. But, um, uh, I'm pretty, I'm okay with it. and uh, as a human being, and uh, I still have a lot more life left in this body and uh, yeah, in my mind. I'm going to keep, you know, applying that, uh, especially when I find the energy and time and space and opportunity to do so. It is my goal in my Always be a positive, a help to those that are in need. That is going to be my ongoing goal. I've been a goal since I'm 15 years old, and I've applied that since 19 years on in my own life, in my own family, in my own kids, in relationships, and friends, and others. And yeah, I've been applying these things all along. And I'm going to, my continual mission will be. Keep helping people, helping young people, helping people psychologically, helping people, older people. Whatever I can do to help someone that's willing to help themselves, I am going to do. I'm going to continue doing that. Um, as, as soon as I find the time and space, I'm going to go out and volunteer. I haven't volunteered since being back here in Australia, but I'm going to volunteer. Uh, some way, shape, or form, I'm going to be out there to... Uh, make an effort to apply myself to helping those who are in need, helping young people, teens, whatever I can do to help, I'm going to be that. And that comes from the fact that help. when I wanted someone in my life to help me out of a bad spot, out of a jam, no one there for me. There were, when I prayed to the, you know, pray to gods, please situation. No God answered my prayers. There wasn't a person there for uh, for a long period of time. I have very little faith in humans. Because they didn't help me. I just know what they are very selfish and um, uh, I can't since I can't blame them for economics and time. So I'm not jazzy. I think for their um, their selfishness, 
but no one, has, no one can be that uh, all the time. I'm not, I'm not rich by any, I haven't been rich by any stretch. I've had to work two jobs most of my adult life, but I found the time to be a help to people. I have found time to be a volunteer. So if I can find time in my business, in, in, in my business, then anyone can find time. And uh, so if, for those who don't, just don't you fucking have an employee sales. And I don't want, I'm not that person. I care. So this is what I have done. And I will do again, helping others. That will always be my continual mission, always. From where I come from, that's why. What? <laughs> that makes sense. All right. Um, I didn't have the best childhood growing up. Um, I was terribly abused from the ages of five to 14 age, when my father, uh, and by the way, this isn't a, uh, was something I was actually thought about. I was actually watching something on TV that I uh, saw on a computer that got me to where I'm leading this conversation, but I was abused as a child from five years of age where I was whipped naked by a six foot, 250 pound truck driver and it would hit me until that person got tired. So here I am at five years old, skinny, naked, being whipped with an extension cord by this grown man. It was one of those situations where I was hit like three times. I was whipped. I was abused. I was. Ab I knew it then that I was abused. I look back when I say, "Oh, you know what? You know, I'm not being whiny about it. Being a bitch about it. No, I'm not being a bitch about it. I knew then I was, was what was going on with me and how I was being treated. I knew it was wrong from Jump Street. I mean, question. Um, my mother, who was indifferent most of the time, and sometimes was an instigator of abuse. My father, a not caring, never a pat in the back, never a smile, never a uh, full of hair, never uh, positive physical reinforcements, a hug or you know, whatever, nothing. I never got any of that stuff from my my parents, my father. Um, I did get structure of the hospital, and I think that's one thing that I, it's the only thing that I did to learn in that situation, but I Use and I always thought this was a huge disconnect. Me and my, uh, especially my father. Exactly, Jack. I try to explain this a lot. Jack, that um, why you, they always ask me why you go on that woman. And this is about the time where would be mad at me. I, can't, I didn't care. I know I was doing the right thing, but when you see something, I'm going to say something. I, from where I come from, it's neglect, that psychological, uh, emotional abuse being perpetrated by that woman, Jazzy. So I'm going to continue on that. If I see it, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to say something about it. Uh, of course, my ego had in mind that I was going to have this issue solved by now. My ego said that. And the reality was that CPS and the police uh, it will do shit. I just had to keep applying. So again, I was I was terribly abused as a kid, and when I got to uh, a couple times, I uh, tried to kill myself. Uh, at seven years old, I tried to kill myself. I can't remember all the way what I did to try to kill myself. Um, I thought about putting my, I used to think about suicide all the time as a kid. Uh, I used to think about it, let me put it in the toaster. You know, at that time, I had like, a toaster in my head. I'm, I'm sorry, a toaster, yeah, I had a toaster in my head. But then, of course, the reality is, why would you have a toaster in the bathroom? That's stupid. <laughs> but I was going to throw a toaster and electrocute myself in that water. And I remember at 13 years old when I tried to kill myself, I took some rat poison and I poured it in a mug and I drank it and I drank a lot of it. And then I went to my bed and laid down and put my hands on my, sh 
on my chest and had my eyes closed and I was hoping not to wake up. Woke up the next morning, no hangover, headache, or anything. It was just like, what? This is dead I'm alive? I'm gonna be dead. Thought about taking my dad's, my father's gun, because uh, I know he had it in the uh, in his uh, drawer. Uh, one of the uh, drawer. And um, when, one day I went to look for it, the day of my last morning, I went to look for it. It wasn't there. So I was going to blow my brains out then. So I, I had suicide as on my head a lot because of what was going on, uh, the fact that I was not being loved, the expression of love for me it was only um, you be quiet. You no one wants to hear you any spontaneous bullshit from you. You don't be a class clown because I kind of was, and then I used to get. Uh, whip for that because the teacher would write home that your son just disrupted class and for some reason me disrupting class was worthy of being whipped until this man got tired of whipping a 13 or 14 year old boy uh skinny little kid he was just i was just getting whipped until he got tired and I said to myself at 14 years old that um and this is the last few the last times I was was abused, I said that I'm never going to be like Paul. I'm never going to be like my parent. I'm going to be a good father, a good parent, a good man. I'm going to seek out things to make myself a good man, a good human being. Um, I'm going to show my kids love. I'm going to show them positive reinforcement. I'm going to be a talking machine. I'm just going to talk their heads off. I'm going to give them open, honest dialogue, uh, information. I'm not going to talk over their heads. Uh, I'm going to talk too much. Uh, talk too much is going to be way better than torturing them. I would never spank or whip my, beat my kids, spank my kids with a uh, corporal punch my kids. Never would do that. I never did. So based on the things that I went through, uh, at 14 years old, I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm just so amped to be a good father, a good man, a good human being. And uh, the last time I was uh, whipped, um, I refused it this time. And he wanted to whip me in front of my friends again. This time, you know, because that's one of the things they try to do a lot. They try to they would intimidate me often at night, every night times where I will be sleeping in the bed. And I had a high motor then, so I wouldn't necessarily go to sleep. I wouldn't get out of bed, but I wouldn't go to sleep. And uh, he will come into the room, check on the kids, check on us kids, my brothers and me, and um, I would pretend to be asleep. And I would hit the door closed, thinking that he left, you know, sometimes, and I turned back over, and he would be right there in my face. I hate disgust. And he did this off the last of time my father would try to play in this weird nighttime type shit. Uh, maybe once every four months from five to 14 years of age for 10 years. Do this. It was, it's the weirdest shit because I just wouldn't shut down. But he maybe he knew, even if he was sleeping, I'm a kid. That's what most kids do. Why fucking try to intimidate me down? What the fucking thing? I never had this fucking relationship. And there was no connection. That there was a, a total disconnect between me and my father. So I can think about my mother. I kind of looked like my mother. And there was a connection, but there was a total disconnect from me and my father. I can think of others. Again, and I had nothing. My father didn't show me a fucking kind word. My father didn't either. Again, my mother was most of the time indifferent or instigator of my abuse. Now, of course, nobody likes to, uh, uh, you know, no one looking back on things wants to say that they did anything. You know, I don't know what's the big deal about 
coming clean and shit, coming with the truth. One of the things that happened while well, when I was a 30, uh, I just came back from leave. I was in the army. I came back from leave. I was on leave, right? No, I had just come back from the army because I tore my order up. And so I was um, staying in New York. Uh, my, my older brother, I had an older brother that didn't live with us. And um, you know, he came to, the, to my mom's house and I was there. And he was, he actually told me the absolute truth of things. So here I am in my 35, 36 years old of age. And my older brother is, is telling me, well, you know that your father, you know, what? Yeah, he's not your father. Your father is my father. We have the same father, me and my older brother. And, uh, so I found out the man that I didn't have a connection with, the man that was whipping me, man was being, uh, man who had connection with me and not a kind word or a smile, pat in the back, a uh, positive word, uh, anything. Was so that this man isn't my father. Not only that this man isn't my father, but the, father, the birth parent, the birth male of my life was actually a man with my mom. And I'm the product of that rape. This is what I found out at 35, let's say you say 35, 36 or something, yeah, 35. And when I heard the news right sitting there, and my mom was in the next room, my, me and my bro older brother, we were at the, sitting in the dining room talking, and my mom was in her bedroom, but she could hear us talking. And um, and I and um, when I heard this stuff, I thought that you know what it makes sense. As we we don't have a connection. Of course, my brothers, my younger brothers, look like their father. My father was their biological father, and I had no looks of my father. I looked again more like my mother. I looked like my older brother a little bit, I think. And it all makes sense why I didn't have a connection. It all makes sense why I was hated and despised and disgusted, uh, treated like shit. My father, I'll tell you more about that, but I told and she in there crying and sorry for herself because this is how I find she out at 35 years of age. She gave me you know, no, any, any indication that any of uh, this stuff was going on in my childhood or my teen, early teens. Nothing. Was, and she now being a fucking because I'm hearing this shit now. And I realized that, well, I better than my mother and better than my parents. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tear her apart. Just looked at her, hands on her shoulder, and I walked out the room. Because I, because I, my, a lot of my questions were answered for me. I, I already knew that I was better than my parents as a human being. I knew that I was better than my parents as a parent, easily. And not to say that I was the greatest parent in the world, but I tried because I cared. I tried because that was one of my goals. If I was going to be a parent, I was going to be the best one I could be. And initially, I was, you know, I was tightly wound. I was too, you know, tight. You know, tight. 
But when you love your kids, you start having a little more patience. And and my kids aren't biologically my kids. They are my kids because that woman that I met, uh, and because my goal of being a parent and showing my showing the world, showing myself that I could be a great parent. I took on this responsibility at 20 years old, 19 years old, 21 years old, of being a parent. Um, uh, she, was, she was white and Hispanic, and those kids were basically white and Hispanic. So not only I was going to be a parent, but I was going to be a parent of, a kid, of kids that were a different race than mine. And I gladly took that responsibility on. I gladly had patience for my kids, and I and because I them. and it didn't matter to me that I had to share the same blood. Uh, no, it mattered that I I show maximum effort and care, and, and I always was reassuring to them, always with a positive for them, have with them. All my kids, my sons, the chiefs, my my son. Always positive, touching with you know, hand, shut, uh, hug, um, hand in the back, playing sport with them. You know, just being a, a good, a good, a good parent. Now, going back a little bit, back to when I was thirty-five, hearing the news that. Um, not only that I am uh, my father's not my father, but he's um, uh, my father, the actual birth father, uh, raped my mom, and I'm the byproduct of that rape. After a few days of hearing about this, and then I put everything in its proper perspective, uh, I understood why my father had such dis dislike for me, disdain for me. Here he is taking care of a kid that is another a man of another man that raped his his wife and he you know and uh, he, he has to take care of me and do for me with in terms of buying stuff and clothing and food and providing a household uh, to uh, definitely had no want he didn't want this kid around him. So, and a little bit, I gave him a little bit of a pass. I gave him a little bit of uh, some, some credit. And that my kids, when they got into their early 20s, my kids say, and of course, they would say, uh, because they get it, their circumstances. Wow, that you know that you didn't really have to be there for us. We weren't biologically yours. Um, you didn't have to be a part of our lives, even when we broke up with mom. I was only with that mom for like four years, and but I kept them all, all the way through, all along, until the uh, up until this day, and going further, forward, and a lot. And they, you know, my son said to me, and you didn't have to do all those things. And he was really proud of the fact that I did. Um, I say to him at that time, that's a bunch, you know, you don't have to give me praise. Uh, as your father, as someone who loves you, cares about you, guides you, um, that's my job. I gladly accepted it. I, the reason why I stayed with your mom as long as I did because of you guys, because I want you guys to be my kids. I love you guys. So the things I did for you, you don't have to give me praise for it. I don't need that. All I need is, uh, you know, that you guys know that I love you. And he praised and I just tell him shut the fuck up already. I don't want to hear this shit. You know, in a playful way. And you hate him. Said the same thing to me. You know, it was uh, it's good that they got it, but you know, I, 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 as a man that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to take care of mine. I don't have to be my, my blood, but we share blood, sweat, and tears. They were minds of, of effort and, and luck. Um, they don't owe me anything. I don't owe them nothing. They owe me nothing. That's it. So.
So I sometimes look back on my parents and I was thankful enough that at least they provided me with all the things that I needed in life. They used more of They gave me a structure of how a household works. Um, and it's funny, my father, being as abusive as he was to me, he was never abusive to his wife. And he, you would hear it, you would know it. I mean, I'm aware of too aware as a kid. I was very active as a kid and very aware. I used to read all the fucking when I was, she used to say shit like, yeah, I don't want to do my own talk. Uh, I don't get food on the same shit when I was five, six years old and giving my family members douche chills about parents that they don't have a lot of finances. Like, I shouldn't be thinking about that type of shit. But again, I don't remember being a fucking kid for the most part. And I do give my mother some credit. Um, for not having me, for taking care of me, providing me structure. Uh, I, for the abuse that was um, done to me, to the intimidation that was done uh, to me, to the embarrassment of being a, a whipped in front of my uh, friends, my friends. Constantly. It wasn't like a one-time thing. They would try to do this constantly to me. Uh, because of these circumstances of life, I knew that a lot being a kid and just thinking about stupid kid shit um, and having kid emotions. I didn't have any, you know, I didn't have any. I don't even remember the last time I was just a stupid, silly kid. Um, I think I was the silliest kid it was like comic books till my fucking ratchet piece of shit fucking fat cousin from Alabama fucking came up and fucking because she was fucking some asshole to the fucking asshole and there was no retribution for that shit of course you know fuck if my comic books was about 300 400 plus comic books since they were my shit I was fucking worried about it. no one there was no extra talking to my cousin from the south who was coming up to visit uh, she fucking stolen as she's close. She gave that shit away to the fucking boy she was fucking. I don't forgive her for that as well. I don't forgive my parents for what they a lot to what they did to me. I understand it. I understand what and the things that I had to heal myself on. I, uh, I totally understood those things. I had a focus that me you know was focused as a teenager about what I wanted to be as a, in terms of a human being. I mean, I didn't get a chance to think about my career. I was so focused just being a better person than these people because of what they're doing to me. I just wanted to be better than that as a human being. I didn't get a chance to focus on, let me just focus on one sport, or focus on one career or whatever. I didn't get a chance to do all those things and have those kind of thoughts. So, to be a better human being than my fucking parents and would never fucking abuse or spank or cope with my fucking kids or anyone I love. So I would say that I think that I am a good parent. Um, I think that I am a good parent. I, I show, I give effort and I give uh, physical contact, I give love. Um, I made me, I'm, I will cry uh, with them. I will cry when I am overwhelmed with emotions about them. I'm not, not sensitive about, sensitive in, in that regard, but uh, those are the only things that make me somewhat uh, have emotion or show emotions. But me, I am not sensitive. Uh, I am not uh, outwardly emotional. I can be somewhat, I've been fucked up in a lot of situations with uh, relationships with women where I just, because uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel sensitivity about whatever shit that I, I didn't feel sensitivity. So I was sensitive to their feelings or their emotions. I mean, I was to my kids to a certain regard, but not even then I, I didn't, I wasn't so sensitive. 
because can't hide and run from it. So yeah, I wasn't sensitive with my relationships with women. Definitely not. And I look back on some of those wow, I was really an asshole. I came from a fucking cold hearted dick. And that's not what I wanted to be. I didn't want to leave that kind of even though we were breaking up or whatever the situation was, I didn't want to be a cold motherfucker. I wanted to be, you know, I think everybody wants to be loved or at least liked. I still want to be loved and liked. I think. <laughs> I kind of thought about like that, but I'm sure I do. Um, I'm so used to not being uh, liked and loved that uh, I have a automatic that um, I don't care. And I mean, it's, I really don't. And uh, I don't expect love. I don't expect. Be light. I don't expect people to have a, a great deal of emotions for me, and uh, I. So I've probably been very cold in, um, in a lot of way, in a lot of ways in a lot of situations. Uh, women that marry women in relationships, I've been so fucked up looking back on. Them. Because I just I just didn't have enough sensitivity to their emotions and their needs and wants, and I don't. Uh, uh, I guess I was only thinking about myself in terms of what I want out of life or what I want out of this relationship. And it wasn't just about the sex. Sex is easy. Uh, I never had issues in terms of getting a woman. I've only had issues where I was just too damn critical of a woman in a relationship where for me to fuck up instead of understanding that fuck ups are going to happen. But I was looking for their faults. I was waiting for them to fight and betray me on any small scale that I was going to use to as evidence of their betrayal or something I just didn't couldn't my line that's a word so I made these things up because I was just so tight just to fucking um I just didn't have enough sensitivity or emotions for for that situation for that woman and I may have loved that woman or I may have liked that woman or lusted after that woman you know woman A B C D and so on and so forth but uh yeah I would just you know just in have enough emotions for them. All right, folks, drink plenty of water, by the way. So those are the things that having no emotions or not being sensitive enough is a byproduct of the things that have happened to me as a child. But, but I stated earlier, my is going to be growing and growing and uh, feeling things, showing emotions, showing, uh, being helpful to other people going forward. Anyone that needs my help in whatever I, whatever I can do to help. Poor, rich, white, or the other. Um, doesn't matter because I I'll help anyone that's in need and is willing to help themselves ultimately. Um, and if I have enough information or effort or whatever the case or emotions, I'm I'm going to continue helping. That's will be my continuing goal. I won't shy away from that. I've done whatever I've done, and I will continue to do whatever I can do. I'm not, I don't think that I'm anything sensational in that regard. I do think that me, me as a human being, I'm, I think that I'm better than a lot of people. And I do have a little bit of an ego. And uh, that does come from the, from the fact that I had to learn to love myself and appreciate my, my, myself and learn new skills and um, apply for be lazy and haven't done some things like confidence and 
Uh, I'm just a confident son, you know, son of a gun now. To the point where arrogance. I am very confident in my abilities and who I am. I know myself very well. I have do, I've done work psychologically. I've read. I've learned. Um, and um, I, I'm, I'm more than I shouldn't say, but I am more okay with my life and the my mindset, and my emotions. Because I put the work in with that specifically. I have multiple goals in mind. I have achieved those goals and then I'm not sensational in stretch of imaginations. I'm not saying that I'm better than most people, other than the fact that I have done some stuff and my ego will say that I am a better human being than some people. Not and uh, so I am better than some people, but um, yeah. uh, but I'm nothing spectacular. This is where I'm getting at. So when I say to you, is like a lot of my videos, a channel that's got taken down. We will. I'm about reinventing, uh, overcoming issues or issues, solving those problems, solving one's mindset. It's okay to have these emotions and these feelings, and that way. Fuel to improve on one's life. I'm about evolving. I'm about improvement, betterment, betterment, bettering oneself. Again, overcoming all those issues and obstacles that are apparent or sometimes extra fucking bullshit, extra situations, being having crimes. Against a person, or any of those things, I'm about I'm about coming back and you know, we're meaning something, and you apply, uh, you try, you overcome, you adapt, you come, you know, try to. I'm about those things. I'm a living embodiment of those things. Hello, Yolanda. Thank you for stopping by. I really mean that. Thank you for support. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, I got a chat up and running, but I don't know if it's going if it's sounding good on your end because it just it's a lot of fuck ups that comes out. Um so yeah, I'm the living embodiment of adapting and coming and improving and reinventing and over uh, evolving. I am that. I said to you guys on um I am have never been rich, but I have I'm in a lifestyle that has been more than adequate. I have traveled I've done a lot of things in my life that I am very proud. I am very proud of what I've led. I am very proud of the things that I've done. I've done those things with no help from, from a lot of people. I a small, short, little, little friends that have uh, done. And I have done for them, and no one owes me. I don't owe them. And some of these people are family. Some of these people are love, love, lovely people, and I'm really proud of. Them. I'm happy with some of the things that I've done. I'm so happy that I've achieved a few of my goals in life. I'm really happy for the men that you see before you. And I know I'm them. I know I'm not rich. I know I a bad dresser. I smell bad or. All these things are not true. Maybe I'm a bad dresser. I'm, I'm a workout guy. Anyway, but I am proud of who I am. I am proud of the life that I've led. I've done things that um, I am. I want. I'm doing them. I have done them. I'm doing them now. I'd like to get back to volunteering. I haven't done that yet. But uh, since coming back, all people do. I am proud of myself. I'm a good man. I'm a good mate. I'm a good king woman. 
and this is me saying it, and I know that I'm not very smart, and I know I'm not very uh, handsome, I know I'm not very smart, but I'm just good at it. Uh, what's our troll, Father? Uh, he's uh, told me that, and I think uh, I didn't do any work this weekend, as I was saying, I told Father that um, I didn't sleep much this weekend. I could not sleep for the life of me. I was having the worst two nights of sleeping. Uh, two nights ago, I slept for three hours. Last night, I slept for about thirty minutes. It's been in terms of sleeping, I don't know, and I get like that from time to time. So this wing thing, um, Tina showed me how to do this, and I haven't done it. I think that I know how to do it. And um, yeah, see what you guys are talking about, and um, let's talk about that too because I I woke up, you know. I didn't sleep, so I didn't really wake up. But so over the night, I was catching up on the uh, YouTube land, and uh, I didn't see that. Jesus, the name. Uh, the witch. The witch name. Sansaret. Sansaret the witch. Spiritual. Spiritual. I was really pleased to see the tree. Uh, it's called out the divine. I was really pleased to see uh, those two or three videos on that topic. Um, I, again, uh, I'm very pleased that she did come out and say the things that she said, but I understand why no one didn't see how it was happening way back when. Now, you people calling it out like, why well, she didn't take her to task? Like, it was. I know you're part of my witch's coven, but you're pretty fucked up and stupid, and you smell bad, and you're a horrible parent. <laughs> uh, um, I saw some divine stuff on Cat. I watched a little bit of her this morning. That's Sydney, Australia. Um, I saw a video and she was talking about spirit tree. And I see, I saw some red videos. And I will say that uh, about the Jaguar, Jaguar Warrior, sorry, I keep disrespecting Jaguar Warrior, 777. How you doing, man? Oh, ma'am, how you good? <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, and I, um, speaking of Jazzy, um, I, I hope that isn't the situation. Um, but it will be very disappointed. It just takes all that effort that I was going through back then, the, the, the strain and, and uh, that was going on with the stalking situation. And uh, I, I can totally understand if from us, uh, if uh, AK was using the situation and her frustration, you know, I use it to my advantage. You know, this moron, this fucking moron is out there, and I might as well put her to work, me, or make her promote um, my business. And make her, if this is true, Jaguar, if this is all true, I can't imagine this being close to true. That, into our fold, and I, I, there's no way she performed. I can only see that AKT her, and just out of sheer frustration, like she, I mean, she won't shut the fuck up. She's still in the state, still trying to get with my son. I'd be like, you know what? Let me just use this. She won't, ain't gonna go away until until she crosses that line. So I can't get the police or CPS to do anything. So. Slobby moron to and promote me and promote my son. That's what I, if that's the case. Uh, again, um, if I was upset, even if this turned out to be all true, what is I still do not believe it. I don't believe that this is the absolute truth. 
I'm not going to be dissing or dishing out on AKT at any stretch of the imagination at any time. I, my rule of thumb, my rule is that if you are a friend of mine, if you are friendly to mine, I will never uh, dump on you in public. Uh, even if I'm joking, I will never dump on you in a joking ma manner in public. Even if you're no longer my friend, I will not dump on you in public. I think it's not character to take advantage of, of one's friendship, you know about that person, and using it uh, because you are friends. I just think that's best bad character. And um, I know people do it all the time. I just I haven't done it in my life, and I won't do it going forward. As people are saying they are. I have not, I just can't imagine it because of the frustration that this woman was under constant stress from a, a divine dummy that she would, anyway, be uh, a friend of hers, a uh, real support. I can see using her because, I mean, she, she, and there's nothing I can do by with the police or you know, the court system. Yes, I would, you know, manipulating her is not hard to manipulate you know. um, So, but of course, being that she's unstable, you, you, you have to be involved with her constantly because she's a, extremely unstable. Yeah, that's what I think for. That's what I'm saying. Um, I can see that, and I think that's a great move by AKT, too. And I'm going to say AKT, Alexis uh, K. Tyler, my friend. And as far as I know, she's still my friend. I'm still her friend. I'm still De Niro Red's friend, and he's still my friend. And uh, have you seen this? Of course, I'm great. Oh, jeez. I, I, again, I can um, I can see using these situations. Uh, Jazzy, uh, Jazzy says uh, they were they they being um, divine dummy and AKT were corresponding in a very friendly way on Facebook. Have I seen this? And I have not seen this. And I can I can see. I mean, what are you gonna do if I was? Her, uh, my, maybe not. Now. Maybe not, but I couldn't, like, she's not going away. She's still going to use his music in the state. Uh, now she got all the kids, so she won't stop. She's not hounding my, my family. She's still going to yell his name out like we're twin flames and twin peaks, twin morons. I mean, she's still doing this shit. So what? I'm about to do some stuff out in public. Uh, De Niro could use some public. I'm using this music anyway. I can see it how it's advantageous to use a stalker jackass to promote herself and her son. I myself wouldn't do it. I if you are someone that I am unstable, erratic, and I think a danger to uh, other people, her own loved ones, her own children, and herself, uh, if she's dangerous, she's totally unstable, I will not deal with her. That's just me. You know? But you have to understand, there is a bit of frustration dealing with someone that won't go away after almost closing in on two years now. You know, just stalking, harassing, using my content, using my, my son, my image, my son's image. Just she won't stop. I gotta constantly batter her. I gotta constantly you uh, spend money that I don't want to call YouTube and call RP, RPJ and talk to her, talk to this person, talk to that person. What can we do to stop her from doing these things? What are your advice? What can we do to it's, it's gotta be very, very frustrating. It's gotta be frustrating, folks. You don't understand that there were severe frustrations. And dealing with someone that is stalking you and harassing you and using your, using your son's image, being a, 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 putting their name, Mister, 
my son's name, put her name next to my name. There would be so much frustration in dealing with that. You have to that you have to give uh, that a thought as well. It's just it's not something that is it's a lot of stress, folks. And it's not easy just to say, oh, I'll just blow it off. I mean, oh no, very strong. She's our own woman. She has an intensity. Uh, and she she sometimes wear her emotional sleeve. And her family. I mean, this shit ain't fucking fun. It's not joke to her. So, a lot of frustrations, and you just have to tear on her. And if she's using the, the divine dummy, or she's allowing the divine dummy to continue doing what she does, she has to sign off on it and a message that I would want out. No, this jazzy, this will not turn out uh, well. What's up, Mike? So no, this will again as because of uh, the mommy suffers from my thoughts, borderline personality disorder, and she will can always always have unstable relationships. She will continue to have unsteady relationships, and no relationship will sustain. Possibly, it won't. It has to sustain in the past. Even her own parents, and mother, and uncles, and friends. Continue friendship with the, the divine dummy. So going forward, it's going to end horribly because ultimately, girl is doesn't find her attractive. Is no one of her, and because he's in a situation where he's uh, under lock and key, he's going to accept uh, whatever trinket to him. I mean, that's just the mindset of anybody in that situation. And, and, and for... <laughs> she got the, uh, no, and I, I did that. Um, that's a good point. She will kill herself. But uh, this will end badly. And the more information that you, uh, the more you deal with the divine dummy, uh, because she in relationships and friendships or whatever the case may be. Uh, she will, and she's totally very unstable. This will invalidate. She will be cursing herself and having these uh, public meltdowns again uh, because this is, you know, how, this is how she lives a life. This is how she always has lived a life. But now she's on media and now she does this meltdown in front of the children on the uh, air. Talking bad about her own, her own mother who took care of her kids. And without any payment from uh, Jamila. So Jamila will have to react because De Niro is, has no want of her. He doesn't find her attractive. She is, no offense to a flabby, flat uh women with, uh, who don't sleep. But Jamila is not a very attractive woman. Uh, no offense. Um, she can put up as many pictures in her 20s showing uh, her butthole and butt and vagina. You better do that now in her 40, than in her 40. Which is, again, it's retarded. Who does that? Knowing that her kids are on social media, even in the same medium. Who who would set kids out there to even get in the middle of this nonsense? Yeah, so the relationship one with AKT, it will not be a, a real one. And it will not sustain, and it will definitely won't sustain her relationship. And, and he, again, will not do it her. She will go to full stalking mode because now he's out and he will stalk and harass Alexis and stalk and harass De Niro. Continue using his stuff and his image and his videos until, and they will still have to and flag down her videos and have, get rid of her channels and uh, even do they don't go back to full frustration. So I, I it's a no win situation. So it's not 
that's why dealing with her to even deal with her on any scale you have to be harassed is is I just wouldn't do it. There's no payoff for it other than some publicity that she's going to give me. But then because she I said a kind word to her, that's how the more she'd be involved with her. It's just going to be just her being a wild woman, a wild man at some point, because there's no relationship. There will be no relationship. There isn't one. There hasn't been one. Nero does not want her. He doesn't find her attractive. He doesn't like women that don't take care of themselves and have uh, alcohol and play treat their kids. And how she even talked about her own mother. This will not be a relationship. It, this will, this will not go well. This will end badly. And no, uh, and yeah, those kids are going to. This is June, January, February, March, April. And the kids, yeah, the kids need to be in fucking school, right? Homeschooling. Don't make me laugh. I mean, there's no homeschooling. She doesn't have even. If she doesn't have the want. There's no effort. She can't sustain anything positive. And her disdain for her daughters has, if it hasn't been evident to you before, be evident to, evident to you now. She uses weapons to really try to hurt the kid's grandmother. Who does this? This is a man that cares about their children. This is a fucking monster that's looking to use the kids to destroy because she doesn't get her way. And I just think she's fucking disgusting. I really, I think that I really, and I know that she has these disorders, but she's responsible for herself. She's responsible as a parent to, to think about her kids over herself. Have to surpass her. And that should be easy, but she's a type of fucking woman and type of type of mother that only wants their kids to reach the level that she's reached. Abject poverty and mental problems. She brings nothing good to the table. I'm glad a mother constantly calls CPS on her. I'm glad. Raven and I and others have done what we've done, bringing eyeballs to her. I will if I see it, I'm going to continue talking about this fucking beast of burden. Although, as I said, stated earlier, folks, that I'm not, I'm hopefully you, a lot of you guys stay with me. I don't suspect that's going to be the case. I am going to evolve the show. I'm going to go do things and talk about things as more people get involved. I'm taking in all the notes and I'm going to this time generation and grow. I like to read. I like to read. I'm going to read on air and try to make that uh, something that people can get into. Like, oh, having a kid speak out loud, reading is something that gives a kid. Uh, confidence in, in him or her. I wish I knew I knew to um, just uh, help the divine dummy and fix these issues and be a uh, help to kids who I hear uh, are damaged or are affected already. And that's really not much you can do. Although I did hear that one of the kids actually wants to be something, one of the daughters, and the other daughter wants to be pregnant and be the spitting image of her mother. And of course, the divine dummy, being the kind of parent that she is, does not want her kids to succeed. She be next to her daughters because she has to compete with them. Uh, she hates the idea that she has to look at uh, better, prettier versions of herself, prettier, younger versions of herself. She has a disdain for that. That because she can see that wow, they're so much prettier than I ever was. They're so much prettier than I am now. They're better versions, thinner versions of myself. Without the bad disorders, which you know aren't so evident at this point. And uh, um, I fear that one of the girls, from what I understand, and um, I understand that both the girls have terrible attitudes towards their 
and we've seen what they have done since uh, since Jamila has gotten them back. Be very dangerous for those girls at some point because one of the things that I do predict is that is very uh, hostile and violent. She's had a lot of fights. You can ask her herself. She had she has put, said this, stated this that she has had a lot of fights as a teenager, a preteen teenager. She has been so she, there's a lot of violence. There's a lot of unstable unrest and emotional unrest inside of her. Her resentment of her daughter is evident and will, yeah, I know, and uh, it will present itself some, some kind of physical altercation. Although the divine dummy is a parade because the daughters are now equipped with a weapon of calling the police. The divine dummy does have some issues with the police or with the courts, uh, with the weed issue that she did have and she has to be, and she has to be clean. Uh, Jaguar uh, Warrior states that uh, we can't help Jamila. We don't have the credentials. She will need several years of therapy. I she I don't think therapy will sustain. I think that she needs to be on moving uh, medications like to keep her anxiety. Melanie, I don't, I thought, I would deal with the divine dummy because she's so unstable. And this will, that, I do understand that it's just a using ploy. She's already playing my son's music but, and uh, using his image over and over again. Uh, it's not in good, this will go back into full, bl full blown rage and anxiety against uh, a lesson when this relationship comes to an end, if there is a relationship. Oh, um, yeah, the police on Jamila. Chazzy, um, I don't know the case too well. You believe a criminal, there's a, um, a shot and kill going on in um, De Niro's case. I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know the case. I didn't talk to Alexis about uh, what was going on. I think she, she was keeping that tight to her best way back when. So I didn't get a chance to ask her about it. But if someone knows something about his case and um, I was sort of like to talk about it, um, and maybe um, I'll look into it actually after it is. Uh, not that I'm looking to, again, De Niro is my, uh, still a friend of mine, and um, Alexis is still my friend, uh, me being her friend. Uh, I may not, I, and lots of times I don't agree with Alexis, I agree with Alexis and I have told her so. A lot of times she hasn't agreed with me and has told me so. What she would do what she does, and there are some people take my advice, and she had taken my, taken my advice. Um, I think this is not a good move in this uh, insane woman, uh, stable because of instability. This will be a problem. She is unstable, she is very concerned, and uh, because you are now, if this is true, if you are now entertaining her in any such manner, this, uh, this is um, everything that has ever happened will be okay, and everything that's going to happen will be okay because of some entertaining of this wild animal, this uh, woman who uh, is stalking jackass of an animal. So that's why I wouldn't deal with it. I wouldn't, in, uh, I can't, like I stated before, the frustrations of dealing with someone that won't go away will still use my image to still set stuff me, told me, and stuff. So I can totally, there's a frustration level that I don't think a lot of you guys have understand, uh, understood. Um, I've been stalked a few, I've been, it has nothing to do with this, I've just been stalked a few times. Yeah, I was stalked as a kid by an older woman that unfortunately, 
you know, to the full and uh, unfortunately has, you know, did stuff with her. And she's taught me, and uh, she's taught me for years, and uh, that wasn't um, very good. It was very problematic, and um, uh, there was there was danger. There was a hint of she could hurt herself and suicide. And, but that uh, will not stop stalking you and your family. And I don't think that a lot of you guys are taking that into account. So um, I do. Because I've been there, I've been stalked. I have nothing to do with it online. I've been stalked as a kid, I've been stalked as an adult by women. Okay, I actually did things with that with that particular woman uh, prior to finding out that they were a little bit messed up and uh, was going to stalk me and not allow me to have other relationships with other women. Uh, they tried to curtail that and have me for themselves. And those kind of women, those kind of women are can be dangerous and the object of their desire. And most of the time, if they are be psychotic in that way, they will kill the object of their, their their stalking. Much like someone put me on to um, Ricardo Lopez, the York star. I watched a few of his videos the other night when I couldn't sleep. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, crap is on the YouTube. You can't sleep. Uh, so yeah, I was watching the Ricardo Lopez, and that guy was off the rock as well. I mean, he sounds like a normal guy in a lot of uh, ways, but man, this guy is, uh, sounds a lot. The instability in the situation is a lot like the Divine Dummies. Um, so. Just and that's why I say you can't deal with that. You can't. You can't. You can't. Uh, you can't deal with that. You can't have that. You can't give that even kind of credit. You can't know that type of uh, insanity by that type of unstable personality, unstable woman. So I wouldn't do it. And hopefully AKT will take my advice on this, or I, do I actually have to reach out to her? I know I threatened to reach out to her, but uh, I did. Uh, I could have did it this weekend. I could have did it any time I wasn't sleeping as well. I didn't sleep I slept four hours, three and a half hours the entire weekend. Ridiculous. I'm on fumes right now. But maybe I should reach out to her and really talk to her. I do not believe there's any type of relationship, anything deeper than just saying words to one another. And uh, yes, you can use my image. This type of thing, my image and my son's image, please. And don't, don't talk crazy. Talk like, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's why you just deal with someone so unstable and potentially dangerous as. So. I do. I am concerned about those uh, teen girls. I think they might be already fucked, for lack of a better phrase. I think that they are one or one of their daughters is looking to get pregnant now, and I think that I think the other daughter wants to do that a lot. The son is uh, again very effeminate. Is the babysitter of. I don't think that having these kids out of school is, is advantageous to their their psyches, their, their studies, to their future. I don't believe that high school is, is good. And that's got to be a crime in that, right? You would think that's, that's a crime in keeping the kids out of school. And who teaches their kids out of school? I just don't understand. 
And I just understand how CPS and the police, I mean, they basically wait until one of these kids are assaulted and have blood streaming down the face out of her, out of her nose, one of the daughters out of their own nose. I just don't understand. That's what Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch that video. You guys do, you recommend that I should watch? I'm going to watch the, 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 the Divine Dummy, the, the girl, one of the girls talking. Uh, I, I I haven't watched it. Uh, I pretty much what the kid said was, it was going to diss grandma. So I think with her kid and her nonsense. Uh, but if you guys say that, that, that the daughters is very well over, and uh, uh, that's a credit to that kid, and she's doing it without much help. And, but I do know that the kids have some uh, um, special educational issues going on with one. Of them. I know there's some special edu education going on, uh, but uh, uh, Jazzy69 says. Um, uh, to not be going to school, Jamila's daughter, Jamila's daughter or daughters is very well spoken. But RPJ CPS loves to run and take this take kids away from loving families, where maybe an unfortunate uh, accidental incident took place. Incident happens, uh, and you're absolutely right. I, I talked about this a little bit before. Like uh, the CPS will. Uh, will they they refuse to take out a black child that psychologically is that until they see scars on that kid's face? And mind you, not even scars; they need to see actual blood or blood on the kid's nose for intercede on behalf of that kid. But I have heard so many stories. Uh, in fact, I saw I heard a story. It was on Dr. Phil. Well, the CPS or Child Protective Services took the away from a woman uh, who the authorities suspected that the kid was being abused and had and they did they overlooked the fact that the maybe is a bone deficiency and a um a, a um some kind of disease uh, or a trait that's and passed down from mother to son. Uh, so they, they overlooked some of these medical issues and thought the kid, the kid man, this woman happened to be white. And I just hear so many stories and I've seen so many stories of white moms losing their kids uh, over some of the same psychological, emotional neglect issues. And you know, that's the situation, they will not take the kid household. It's, it's fucking terrible. Yeah, all right, Jazzy, I'm definitely going to take a look at that two part that you know, uh, the and, and the One of the daughters talking. talking. Did, you did watch it. Clouded Color says she didn't watch it, the, those videos, and I honestly don't believe shit. That was said. Her mom was sitting right there. So I'm definitely going to take a look at these videos. In fact, my show is over 29 or sooner. I'm going to definitely take a look. And the grandma from a recording on her cell. And I said, nothing grandma did wrong. Right. There's nothing going on here. She's just fucking Jamila getting her daughters to talk ill of grandma. I think that's bullshit. Okay. I was talking to my girl. Well, she was talking to me about we need milk. Alright, baby, I'm on the air. I'm sorry. I'm on the air.
You know, Mike, you know, there's a problem with uh, Georgia because right before um, there was a case in CPS where uh, child protective services where they got the kid out of the family and they put a kid with foster parents and the foster parents happened to kill that kid. And this happened a while back in Georgia. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. Oh, PJ. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, so now that they they took it out of the household, that foster parents, those foster parents have killed that kid. So there's no way they pull in absolutely I mean, the kid has to have their head chopped off the CPS or child protective services is going to look at our household. It has to be that stuff. So, and in Georgia, that's all the news. So, this, I, I don't know what else that I can do. I think that uh, we have all overachieved uh, by bringing out our. Um, I, I don't know what ignoring her is going to do because I know that she was just going to amp up the, amp up the uh, ante and do something to more outrageous just to get everybody's attention. So I'm very concerned about taking away all attention from her. So um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want her to she does give her attention or even write her anymore. Uh, so I, I, don't know, I don't know what else we can do. But how about the situation? She knew all of this from her childhood, yet she left him. And my yeah, some yeah, sometimes foster parents are no better, and that's what's the case in this one. So and that's the case in a lot of situations. Now I do believe that grandma would actually take the kids back if she had you and the kids were respectful to her. Um, but uh, now that they crossed over and made say terrible things about their grandma, um, I don't know what kind of relationship they, they're gonna have now. Grandma has her own health and uh, issues and uh, she's very frustrated and very tired from daughter and now granddaughters but they probably, you know, Randall's probably gave uh, Grandma hell. And I think she, I think she did that, that they were disrespectful to her. And, uh, and I think they get a lot of that from because of their mother. Uh, 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 things fucked up. Jenny now says the little girl bad mouth Grandma, and she told her that. They don't get any of her food but TV dinners. But the way she talked to her grandma, I don't you would not suspect me I they TV dinners, that's the worst thing in the world. This TV dinners, that's something to complain about, something to complain about. I'm sure they have TV dinners every night. Yes, Melody, that you are right. They will make Jamil's life. Jamil, you know better than that. Uh, she definitely resents those two daughters. She doesn't don't like them. They are prettier, younger, thinner versions of herself. And she despises that as the fact that she has to compete with them. She looks at those kids as competition. And she despises those uh, daughters. Every chance that she can to leave them, she has. I don't know why the kids are in school. I don't know how the boy who's been out of school for the long, the oldest boy has been out of school for the longest. I understand that the kid still grunts and will say a word right there like bye, bye, but he grunts. I only hear him grunting. It's three years. I can stop talking to a lot of kids. I have never met a kid that was, didn't talk before three years old. Me? I didn't meet you. Um, that explains a lot. Uh -huh. So I don't understand. Well, I just don't get it. I don't understand. 
But something will break at some point, and you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I hate to see those kids go down the rabbit hole. I think that they are going to. I think they're already pretty much affected, and I don't think that anything they can do uh, time soon. I think that they are basically just going to be a um, uh, they're going to be uh, two girls on the system, two girls have teenage tendencies and bad relationships and will have unstable just like they are. They will be unstable emotionally, mentally, like their mothers. I, and I think that's starting to develop into at least one of the uh, words. I don't think this is all going to be and they're going to have some terrible moments and then that poverty is something that you should pass down to you kids. They it's so yummy. I can't hear when you play with the baby. Come on. Love you. Me too. Uh, Jazz, Jazz is says that older boy don't want to hear that shit his mama on. <laughs> no. um. But he can't escape her. Baby. I'm done. All right, girl, come on. It's just a bit of plastic. You know, I'm trying to talk and make all that noise. Anyway, folks. Um. I, I, again, if there was anything that you guys um, come up with that would be some kind of way, I mean, I, there's a long term regulation of someone that's stable, so trying to talk to this woman is not going to be sustainable to anyone. No one, the same relationship is part of the, the uh, disorders, the borderline. So, if there's anything that you guys can think of that I haven't thought of, I haven't tried, and we all can try, let me know. Uh, right in the, and now, right in the comment section of any video that you see, I would gladly try anything I can. Um, talking to grandma myself, and yeah, she's very frustrated. You know, nobody really wants to come out and talk about how dysfunctional their uh, relationships are, or how fucked up things are in their family. No one wants to do that, but the NFL, she, Sherry, has done that. Uh, is very frustrated. I mean, this is abject frustrations in dealing with this type of thing. And I like, to, and I, I just don't know what we can do. And I don't know what to do. a three year old that is talking. And um, it does look like it might have some autism issues. You know, some of those things seem, um, some of this behaviors and lack of eye contact seems on par with some of the things that I've seen autism. Uh, so there are some times that I have seen not nothing that's related to autism, but I, in more cases, more times than not, I have seen more situations where a kid demonstrates a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, characteristics of autism. And I don't understand how to get away with the kids not being in school at all, knowing that the daughters are in special education and need all types of education and attention. In a, in a proper school. I just don't understand how they can get away with not being in school. There's got to be someone that you, you think that police would, if you, they do a welfare check, but she would lie and say the kids are in school. That's what that would happen. So you, we, one thing that has to be said is you have to tell the police, whether it be in video or written form, that the, those children are not presently in a school in Georgia. They're at home every day with mom smoking cigarettes and cases and drinking booze every chance you get. Uh, I don't know what was the uh, result of her not. She did a, a, a drug test for CPS that came by for a visit. So she refused to take that drug test. And then I don't know what was the ramifications of that. If ramifications have been applied in, in that situation, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, CPS can. Uh, hopefully she can 
But uh, I don't believe that uh, Jamila long term is going to be uh, unless she gets some kind of mood off drug. This type of lifestyle, this destructive lifestyle, this um, lifestyle of and uh, and this is happening. Right, right, right. Uh, you certainly know autism very well, and um, yeah. Very on in a whole, and uh, a lot of things that you said and written have been brilliant pieces of, of work. And I, uh, you, you should listen to Yolanda in the situation. A lot of, and, and I again, I think tomorrow health, and we need to have a government. We need to remind ourselves that mental health is getting checked out, getting our children and people around us checked out mentally. Psychologically, emotionally, or even psychiatrists or psychologists, any uh, big brother, or big sister, any kind of program where it just offers some kind of communication back and forth. Uh, we need to start applying that to some of these low income housing and, and all housing. All these things we talk about. We need to bring mental health as a forefront. Uh, as should be one of the first things we talk about because it's not being talked about in America or anywhere. Everything is being taught here. This to help. It's not, they also talk about uh, the fairness of women, men in terms of ways. They, they, so they are making a concerted effort. That's something I want to talk about tomorrow. Uh, but black girls, I haven't gotten to that topic yet. It's one of my topics that I had for last week, but everything got pushed back. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that need to be talked about. The um, mental health is one of the forefront things that need to be talked about in all communities, especially in poor communities and poverty stricken communities, and poor white trash and Mormons, whatever it is, wherever those communities are uh, ill equipped and ill funded, they need, we need to talk about uh, mental health and make it affordable, make it kind of mandatory, especially if you are. Dealing with CPS, mental health needs to be even something as mandatory. You need to offer parenting classes and counseling uh, classes, for not only the mother, but for the children of a fucked up mother, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase again. So, I mean, something's got to be done here, and uh, this. Uh, is, boy. And, Yolanda, having a 15-year-old on a road, driving on the road must scare the dickens out of you. I mean, jeez. Um, like me, so well, my son drives like me, and I was like so afraid for him because at least I, I can see. I'm like, you know, I see everything, and uh, so I was really concerned about my son. My son but uh, you know, so far so good. He's a driver, still has that. Uh, you know, he's living in Florida. Uh, I still have that New York's driving in Midtown or Brooklyn. And uh, since I'm, I've learned to chill, take my foot off the gas all the time. So, folks, um, even though I did talk again about a situation about uh, a woman that was is clearly unstable, and because she is completely ratchet, she's wretched, ratchet. So um, there will be times where I'm going to lose a lot of the audience. They're not going to be with me on a lot of things. Yeah, because I, I I see things in my head about reading, and I like to people I'm a big reader, and um, reading is good. And if I have young people watching me and want them to know 
you know, reading is cool, learning is cool, uh, evolving and reinventing myself is cool, and um, I'm going to be doing different things on, the, on, on in this platform, and I'm definitely going to take advantage of this opportunity again of, of having people that believe in me and want to uh, get behind me. These are not only uh, but they have to be friends. And, and I really appreciate their uh, support of me and giving me the opportunity once again to take the ball on. Um, and so I can point this time around. I'm going to be well around. I'm not going to be too, too uh, impatient because I tend to be sometimes impatient. For sometimes sometimes I see things and I just want to do it. But I'm taking in all the. Um, advice that people are giving me i have to do a little more research in terms of research and watching other youtubers uh, build up their uh, identity no not that identity build up their um, status how do they follow a program they follow a way of building themselves up so i have to watch more and right now take my keep taking notes and uh trying to make this uh um, trying to make the, do the best I can and follow the footprints set by others that were set by others that were set by others that others are following along and I had to follow that as well. Uh, RBJ, Yolanda says, RBJ, everyone on earth has some type of mental health disability, but there are those who can control their issues and there are those who ignore the issues. Shamila has chosen to ignore the her issues. I agree. And that of her son. I agree. Uh, uh says the clouded, which maybe is not my business. Maybe I shouldn't repeat this, but uh, um, she commends Claudia for moving forward in her life and not letting uh, her disability, the disabilities, hinder her. And I agree with that. I'm, I'm a victim. I'm really happy that anyone can uh, overcome any uh, hindrance that, that, could, that could slow down a person. So I'm really happy for you, uh, Claudia, and um, happy for you. <laughs> On the road, driving around. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to have you up at night and your heart beating to your chest. That's not going to be good for anyone. <laughs> I went through it, so um, I went through it with my oldest son and because uh, he drives so much like me. So, and, but, and I'm tall on the seat, so I see everything. I'm like Terminator 2, I see everything. Like me, so I'm pretty happy. And I'm good like that. I'm good like that. I'm good like that. Um, before I leave, um, and I, you guys may not uh, believe this or not, but I am. I I, I still support uh, Tina, and uh, I still want Tina and Cat to somehow work out their friendship or relationship or or the communication with one another there are some issues on, uh, i can see that both people have and now you would think that i would be the last person that would be pro for cat or anything considering the things that were said by her about me. Uh, again folks i am not upset or hurt by anything that anyone says about me ever because uh, i'm really sure of myself i'm very ego and confidence in myself um, but, uh, and I definitely like some of the things that Kat has said, uh, her perspective on certain issues. Um, I don't have people who will trust Kat. Um, I still like some of the things that I see her talk about. I uh, really want her to uh, have that. I don't want anyone to have be uh, at odds with anyone. I don't want Mike Mills to be at odds with uh, these women. Um, I don't want to be at odds with anyone. Uh, uh, I saw how she is. Cassandra all said is. Uh, um, I saw a couple of her videos and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I don't know. Uh, 
uh, and you know, if she's pro, whatever she's pro, that's on her, and uh, people can like whatever they like. And you would like to give everyone all the information that they could use before making decisions. No, in a coma, <laughs> pretend to be in a coma, call kids pieces of shit. I mean, this dog got people's kids, kids with. Uh, with some disability, has some disability issues. It's just beyond anything I can think of as manhood or adulthood. So we think you would just want to give her information, but you know, information is not king in, for most people. So people don't do enough research and understanding and put being in perspective. Receiving what you can sense in people in a person when you just talk to them and see how they write. So, anyway, folks, I will be back into more issue stuff um, tomorrow and going on and going forward. Um, I like to talk about the uh, issues of black girls, and I like to talk about murderers. Uh, are walking the street among uh, among us, and that didn't get found uh, guilty of murder. I like to do those in the upcoming shows on uh, here on RPJ Show Live. I will be getting out, making more videos. I'm thankful to shout out to those people that really are behind me and support me. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate. The kind words, the uh, resources, the equipment, the equipment that I already have, in fact. Uh, so I really appreciate people being behind me. Um, their word means something. They, they, if they look at, at if they see me as their brother, I certainly get it because I'm my brother and sisters uh, being supportive to me, be giving me tough love the first time around, you know, being constructive. Uh, maybe they, you know, also uh, listening to me as well because I have some thoughts as well, and I'm not a robot, and I'm not going to do everything that's asked of me to do. But I do get the I can I can take criticism, I can take advice, and I do appreciate people adding to giving me information. And I since having gone through this process the first time around, where I was just so impatient in one aspect and then I was dealing with a bad relationship that was falling to pieces my, and, and, and I let things get to me on that end and it really hindered me from making the success out of myself uh, in this media. And maybe in other meetings, maybe in, I don't want to speak out, speak out and say something that I give away some information, but you know, getting on TV and is, is a goal of mine and having a real TV uh, type of identity is what I want. Also, in the, I like to do more acting in the movies. I think in the movies, those things are possibilities, and uh, I have to work hard. And I have to be well thought out, and I can't be impatient. And I, but I have to be intense about it. And um, I won't let anyone get in the, my way of that goal. I see it so clearly, and I'm so thankful to get a second chance at doing this and getting this opportunity. I'm so thankful for that, uh, that I will try. And I write down every suggestion that was taken me so far, and I have applied it other than today because I have clients and I work, I work out some work clothes. And uh, so I have to make do. But uh, yeah, I'm going to keep applying. Make it as uh, best I can. So, God bless you, RBJ. You've been through a lot, but I've overcome. Yeah, I, I have. Thank you, uh, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's really appreciative. Wow, you caught me. Uh, my emotions are uh, hanging out. And I'm glad that the sound is much better. Um, distortion, right? There's just some issues. Yeah, I'm. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. I think that I'm gonna give up that mic. But wait until I got my equipment. First, uh, I have mics on them. I'm gonna get me some uh, boom mic. Um, I'm really. Things are really. Oh, I'm so happy at this point. 
with where I'm going with things. Uh, I hope that you guys stick with me. Uh, it's not going to be what you guys think uh, in terms of doing a whole bunch of ratchet shit. There will be some ratchet shit. You know, to follow some, you know, I have to. I like certain things that we can learn from from, from ratchetness, and so I will use those things. But uh, um, again, I like to go in different areas, and I'm not going to be uh, not going to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, so someone that you know, someone that I'm going to go this area. I, I don't want you can't. I don't want it to be where everyone knows what I'm going to. Spontaneous, or I want to be, I want to talk about things that will blow people's minds. Like, whoa, I can't believe you're talking about this. Like, yesterday you were talking about ratchet shit, today you're talking about fucking uh, Bill Gates and uh, you're talking about fucking uh, interest rates and other things. Well, I won't be talking about interest rates because that's stupid. <laughs> Um, so, folks, I really appreciate you guys stopping in and checking me out. Uh, Jaguar, thank you. She says, or he says to me, I bless you in all your endeavors, RBJ. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, I, you know, you know, I'm not really religious, but uh, uh, no, I don't believe, really believe there's a God. And if there's a God, and I'm that manifestation of that, I guess. It really is one. Of course, that sounds terrible to say to people. So, um, but I do appreciate the sentiment, uh, without a doubt. Um, Yolanda, you are awesome, mother. Uh, anyway, folks, I can wrap up the show now. Uh, my name is RPJ. This has been the RPJ Show Live. Thank you guys very much for stopping in and checking in on me. Um, it's not always going to be what you guys think that I'm going to talk about, but I'm glad that the core guys, the core friends and, and fans uh, really appreciate me enough and will and, and participate with me and, and learn something from me. Learn something from me. So I respect you. All right, folks, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I really, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And uh, that's it. That's all. That's all, folks. What am I saying? What are you saying? All right, see you later, folks. Bye-bye. Stop broadcasting!